Hi, I'm Semin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Finding the Location of an RFC Poll, the Intuitive Approach. The motivation for this presentation is this circuit here, which is a network uh, built around an operation amplifier for realizing a compensator for a power conversion system. In particular, we are interested in this region here. This is like it. PID, you might say it's a double zero, and we have here a phase advance uh, that is used to compensate some of the phase lag of a typical uh, power conversion system. However, I'm interested in this presentation in this pole here, the location of this pole. Approximately under these conditions, this pole is 1 over 2 pi R3 C3 the location of this pole here. However, if I do an analysis of this circuit, looking at it as a inverting amplifier, Zf over Z in, Zf over Z in, rather a minus here, then I find, just by taking these two in parallel, I find for Zf by taking these two branches in parallel, I find that I have a pole at zero frequency, which is fine, this is like an integrator, and then I have a zero, and then I have another pole, which I'm interested in, this is the pole I'm interested in, and lo and behold, this pole is one over R3, C2, C3, over C2 plus C3, meaning that these two are in series, that is, this expression here is for these two capacitor in series. This looks very strange because you'd like assume that this will be in parallel. I mean, why would they be in series here? So this is the motivation here to try to explain it in an intuitive way. Now, no question that this is correct. I mean, no argument about that. But let's try to understand why is it so. So if I look at this, then I see that instead of having these two in parallel, then I have these two in series, and this is the expression. A neat way to find out what is the time constant of a circuit that has one capacitor is to use the Thevenin approach. That is, we sort of say we have this circuit here, so separate the capacitor, look back and find the equivalent resistor, equivalent source. I'm not interested in this source. I'm interested in this equivalent resistance. And of course, the time constant will be RC and the location of the pole will be one over uh, RC. In a more complicated system, you can do the same thing. Just separate the capacitor, look back, find out what is the equivalent resistance. And then of course, the uh, pole here is 1 over RC, and the time constant is RC. So this is a very, very neat way uh, to uh, very quickly find out the time constant of the system if you have many resistors, one capacitor. Now you can do the same thing if you have a current source. So you separate this capacitor, you look back, you find out what is the equivalent resistance, uh, when of course this is disconnected, or set to zero, uh, being a current source, and the same way you find what is the time constant or the location of the pole. So this is fine. The point is that in this circuit, contrary to what you would think, this impedance, this sub s, is fed by a current source, not a voltage source. Although it's an output of an amplifier, still it is fed by a current source. The reason is that if you have a voltage source here, the current here is dictated by the fact that there is a virtual ground here. So the current here is forced to be V in over Z in, and this is the current that flows this way, or this way. So we have a ZF which is fed by a current source. It's not a voltage source. So this is the equivalent circuit. We have a current source, we have this network here. Now, using Tavenin, disconnecting the source, 
in this case I'm looking at these two capacitors, one capacitor and looking back, then obviously the RC time constant or the pole is 1 over R and these two in series. Or if you wish, you can separate the resistor here, look back, look back here, and you see again two capacitors. So in, the, in this particular case, because the ZF is fed by a current source, you do see these two capacitors in series. Amazing. Now, for those who are not convinced yet, let me show it in a different way. A different way to find a time constant will be sort of a mental experiment like this. Suppose you have an RC circuit, either voltage fed or current fed. Now let's uh, disconnect or show the voltage or disconnect the current and then put some DC initial condition on the capacitor. This can be then translated into a model which has a capacitor with zero initial condition, zero voltage, and a voltage source. And obviously there will be a curve like this in the time domain now, this is the time domain, and it'll be with the time constant RC, no question about that. So now let's do the same thing with the circuit. I'm going to put, I'm disconnecting the source, putting here DC. Here is the equivalent circuit for this part here. We have a voltage source and lo and behold we have an RC circuit which is comprised of two capacitor in series, not in parallel. Very interesting. Let me turn now to another issue which is also related to these two capacitors and this is at the low frequency. And in particular, I'm looking at again at low frequency for this transfer function here. Again, we have ZF over Z in, this is the gain, and I'm assuming now that R2 has a lower impedance than this branch here of R1C1, so the gain will be ZF over Z in. Now we have found that ZF is 1 over S times C2 plus C3, and then we have a zero and a pole. Now at low frequency, we are below the zero and below the pole, so therefore these are smaller than one. And consequently, we are left with this expression here. This is for the impedance. This is not the location of the pole. This is just the impedance of this branch at low frequency. And therefore the gain, which is Zf over Z in, will be one over S C2 plus C3 R2. In this particular case, C2 and C3 are in parallel. This is in contrast to what we had before that they were in series. So here we have these two in parallel for the impedance. That's not the pole, this is the impedance. So the gain here is one over S and this expression here. This brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it interesting and that it'll be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.